Louise Adele Rosa Maria Aman, better known in history as Louise Cassati, was born a countess and became a marquis after her marriage. During the first three decades of the 20th century, the legendary Marquise Louise Cassati triumphed as the brightest star of European society. Her enigmatic beauty inspired painters, sculptors and fashion designers to create masterpieces. Louise was born in January 1881 in the family of an Italian cotton merchant, Count Amman. She received a brilliant home education, but it was not science that fascinated the girl. Since childhood, Louisa absorbed the taste for luxury and refined sophistication, but her parents considered the girl a dunce. Moreover, the owner of a bad character. Everything changed when Louise was 15 years old. First, her mother died, soon after her father went into the next world. And Louisa, together with her sister, became heiresses of a huge fortune, becoming the richest brides in Italy. At first glance, Louisa was not distinguished by beauty. Skinny, very tall, a little angular, and a big nose. But a good dowry mitigated all her shortcomings. When the girl was 19 years old, she met at a ball with the Marquis Camillo Cassati Stampa di Soncino and soon married him, becoming the Marquis of Cassati. They soon had a daughter, Christina. And then Louisa's flighty temper made itself felt. She found her husband boring. Household chores did not attract her. And then there was an insidious tempter, the Italian writer Gabriele D'Annunzio who constantly whispered to Louise that she was created for another life, advising her to turn life into a holiday, to spend each day as the last. And D'Annunzio's words had their effect. The marriage was broken. Since 1914, the Cassati couple had already lived apart, and in 1924 divorced for good. Separated from her husband, Louisa moved to Venice, in the castle, which she called Castle of Dreams. She dyed her hair a fiery red colour, her eyes thickly outlined with pencil and buried in them belladonna, so that the pupils dilated and eyes from green seemed black. Her outfits were legendary. She dressed in oriental beaded kaftans and Indian saris. She was not afraid to appear in the street. As pets, she had two cheetahs, parrots, a gorilla and snakes. By the way, snakes she sometimes wore around her neck as jewellery and cheetahs led on a leash like dogs. Marquise Cassati arranged extravagant parties which gathered the whole colour of the European aristocracy and artistic intelligentsia. At such masquerades, Louise appeared as Cleopatra or as a beggar or as Medusa Gorgon or as Harlequin the Marquise Cassati turned her life into a celebration, and she gave a holiday to others. In the meantime, the money melted away and huge debts were incurred. They say that in 1930, her debt to creditors amounted to $25 million. Had to sell the castle, to sell her portraits, made by the most famous artists of the time. After all, Louisa Cassati is probably the most artistically represented woman in history after the Virgin Mary and Cleopatra. Her portraits, sculptures and photographs could fill an entire museum. Afterward moved to London, where her daughter Christina lived. Spent many years quite modestly in a one-room apartment, supported by her former friends. It was there that she died in 1957, Marquise Cassati, extravagant and unusual, a muse to artists, an inspiration to writers and poets, was 76 years old. The Marquise's tombstone bears a quote from Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. Age and habit have no power over her. There is no end to her variety. But she still lives on in art, literature, poetry, fashion and urban legends.